Hello, my name is Benjamin Moritz and I'm an executive partner and part of the 2018 founding team of HQ Asset Management based in Germany. Our mission is to help institutional and semi-institutional clients manage their complex liquid asset portfolios. We are a quantitative and scientific-driven asset management firm. We combine finance with artificial intelligence and technology to build better investment products for stock selection, asset allocation, and risk management. Today, I will explain to you three things. The first thing, the key points to survive in asset management and to shape the future. The second thing, a short insight into our investment process platform. And the third thing, it's insights about our stock selection approach with a case study for European stocks. So let's start with the future of asset management or how to survive in asset management. So we see the asset management industry going from a seller's market to the buyer's market. For many decades, investing in stocks and bonds was so profitable that the high costs of the industry only played a subordinate role for investors. That has changed today. Among other things, because of the persistently low interest rates, but also because many investors are no better informed. They are looking more closely than ever before on many issues such as seeds. So three topics are important. The first is, investors are looking more and more closely at the added value of investment strategists and fund managers. A major trend towards passive investing has emerged from this in recent years. But index providers are increasingly becoming quantitative asset managers. So the key question is therefore not active or passive, but who can best evaluate the numbers systematically? The second point is that active funds outperform the benchmark and passive products often on average before costs, but no more after costs on average. So this is what the European Securities and Market Authority came to in a study published in 2019. Since the demand for different systematic investment strategies remains high, investors are increasingly turning to cheaper ETFs from index providers. However, this does not have to be an advantage for the investor in every case. For example, smart beta indices provide added value on average in the historical backward calculation, but no longer from the time the index is published as a team of scientists shows recently. So the key question is therefore not asset manager or index provider, but rather who can offer a first-class investment process and keep costs low at the same time. So then the third thing is the needs of investors are very different. So asset managers must rethink from focusing on the product to focusing on the individual investor, wrote Professor Martellini back in 2016. In technical terms, this is called mass customization. According to Professor Martellini, the scalability of investment processes is a technical challenge. So the key question is not, do we need to think product-centric or customer-centric, but who offers the first-class investment process at low costs and above all, individually. So how can you survive? We think that a modern asset management company needs to focus on five things. So the first one is the work culture. Teams should not be divided up according to different investment process as it is traditionally done. 
Otherwise, this means that countless tasks have to be done twice, regardless of whether it's a, just a performance calculation or a, an AI algorithm. So we need to keep behind the silo thinking, we need to work more together in collaboration. The second thing is technology. The use of modern technology is not only important for the application of procedures from the field of AI, but in general. One example of modern technology is cloud computing. And this is more than just shifting investment costs to operating costs. It is more of a pay-as-you-go system where you only pay for what you use. So you don't need to have, you don't, you don't, you don't have to keep a computer capacity of thousand computers available all the time. You can start, use, and stop it in just a few minutes. And that makes sense not only economically, but also ecologically. A third thing is the use of alternative data in the MF process. So text is an example. Text data provide additional information compared to traditional data, such as inflation, interest rates, or the price earnings ratio. Text also provides an opinion or interpretation. So newspaper articles contain the author's opinion at that moment, and that is great data. The fourth thing is artificial intelligence. So Bruce Jarko and Kenneth Levy are pioneers in quantitative asset management. In 1989, they wrote in a scientific article that the stock market is a complex system and that simple rules, such as only by stocks with a small market capitalization, so the size factor are not sufficient. This is a great study. So they write that the stock market is made up of a web of many interconnected effects and that substantial computing power is required to unravel the effects. Today, there are more and more studies that certify that artificial intelligence methods are superior in asset management. And the fifth theme is communication. I think it is one of the most important here because in my point of view, a good and simple communication is more than ever the key to success. So big changes, as we describe them here, have to be explained simple and with examples. So in order to successfully implement an AI approach and technology in asset management, we believe that two things are essential. We at HQ Asset Management, we have a team that has many years of experience in asset management, in addition to methodological and technological know-how. We also have a deep knowledge of AI. So our team consists of nine professionals and is completely the same since our foundation in 2018. We are highly and diverse educated, everyone is holding a master's degree plus an additional degree. And everyone has more than 10 years working experience in the asset management industry. And this is key, that you also have the working experience in the industry. And secondly, we are a scientific pioneer in the field of AI and stock selection. So the theoretical basis or approach we use is a joint paper by Professor Tom Thurman and myself in 2014. And based on that work, we at HQAM have spent a great deal of time over the past few years to develop this AI approach into an investable investment strategy. We will see the process on the next slides. So let's go into detail. The first step is the feature engineering process step. Our investment universe is a global one. We cover each individual stock in the world. This allows us not only to offer a broad range of products to our customers, but also to check our whole process for robustness in a global setting. Our frequency of the whole process is monthly. 
and we use detailed point in time data for fundamentals and also estimates. So we take care of data revisions. Um, we also calculate the ratio, so like price earnings ratio on our own. This allows us a full transparency on the data because the ratio calculations differ somewhat between each data vendor. And we also build many variables based on our decade long financial and economic experience. In the second step, we select the most promising features each month. We take several steps to transform the raw data into refined data. This includes, among others, denoising, linearization, standardization, and industry adjustment. In the next step, we select the most promising data for forecasting returns dynamically each month. So we reduce the dimensionality and we statistically look at each individual turnover and return risk properties. In the third step, we take the data, the selected features, and feed it in our multi step forecasting process. So we fed the data into the random forest. The random forest algorithm is based on many simple decision trees. And the key advantages of this algorithm over simple linear models are three things. So the first is all data can be used jointly. So the random forest gives you the answer about which data is really important. The second thing is complex patterns of single variables can be used in forecasting. And the third is the interaction between all variables can also be used in forecasting. To determine the most robust setting, we use our highly efficient cloud computing resources to run many different options. We then do not choose a single best result but the most robust one. And in addition, we have full insights into the whole process with our, with our comprehensive reporting pipeline, which gives us a deep look into what is going on in each step. And in each step, we strongly take care of turnover of the strategy with multiple different trading rules. And the last step, fourth step, we take the return forecast as basis for a portfolio optimization. So for portfolio optimization, we need risk forecasts as well. We, we retrieve monthly risk forecasts for each company from the MSCI bar risk model. The risk forecasts play a subordinate role in selecting the overweights in the final portfolio of a benchmark strategy but it improves the diversification of the underweights and helps in targeting the active risk target, if you think in a benchmark strategy. Can, it, can have, it can take other roles, if you think of other strategies um, like total return. To solve the portfolio optimization efficiently, we make use of modern convex optimization algorithms. We also, able to define complex and hard to solve constraints to have the most efficient transaction cost management. We can set transaction cost thresholds, for example, or conditional rules when there is an inflow. We monitor our portfolio on a daily basis and act manually when there's an extreme stock specific event only, but this is very rare. On the last two slides, you can see some insights about the models. And this is, this is, the, first, this is the first slide on the, what it's, it's called so the partial dependence plot in a technically sense. So here are some insights for the European use case. You can see it here, the realized decile portfolio performance of a simple thought momentum strategy in 
Europe. The numbers are calculated with data from the last 10 years. And you can see how each individual model is able to capture the nonlinear pattern in the data. You can see on the, on the right hand side, if you do simple sorting, you just buy the top 3D sites and sell the lowest 3D sites. And here you can also see that, for example, the fourth decile has the same expected return as the one, the first three, but it is not in the buying portfolio. That could be an issue if you look at turnover rates, if you want to reduce the turnover. So AI is able even to reduce the turnover in comparison to a simple sorting strategy. Then you see in the middle, a classical linear regression where you can see high estimation errors. You see the over and under estimation with the red bars. So a linear model is not able to capture the nonlinear effect in the returns. And you can see on the left-hand side, a partial dependence plot so from the random forest model we employ, and you can see that it's, it's very good in capturing the nonlinearity of the data. And here on the last slide, you can see the feature importance, the aggregated feature importance from the model over time. You can see an inherent fact timing and how value was important until 2010. After that, quality has risen enormously in importance. And this is great to see. So you have, you have, an, um, you have so to say, a factor timing, an inherent factor timing in the strategy. Now the algorithm is able to capture that to learn from the data. If you estimate your model on a rolling window, you can, the model adapts to the changing environment and is able to capture different factor attractivity. So this is directly calculated feature importance out of the random forest model. This is my presentation, and I want to thank you. And one, one thing, so due to regulatory reasons, I'm not able to say something on any live product, but if you gained interest, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you.